G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. I uh, just thought I'd uh, share some information with you on uh, an Acer laptop. I was um, installing Linux Mint for a client and um, I've, I've already installed previous Linux Mint on his all-in-one desktop computer. I can't remember which model that is now, but... Um, um, so he wanted it on this laptop as well, Linux Mint. So I decided to install, install it under UEFI. And um, so I set it up as I normally do for UEFI. Uh, you have the 512 megabyte FAT32 partition, which was SDA1, and the root partition SDA2, and a data partition SDA3. So I'm doing that. Um, I installed uh, Linux Mint and upon boot I got this no bootable device so everything seemed to run okay the live disk started up okay it installed fine uh, so I thought I'd go back into the um, in uh, re reboot the live disk of Linux Mint cinnamon and open up Gparted clear off the um, delete the FAT32 partition, reformat it, leave it clear, don't use it. Just use the root partition uh, SDA2 and install directly to SDA, which is how you normally do it in legacy. Um, so I did that, rebooted, and again, I got this, no bootable device. So um, the only option I... I, I tried again with the uh, with the boot partition, uh, UEFI boot partition FAT32. Did that again. Um, unfortunately, that still didn't work. I came across this one again. Tried a couple more times. Uh, yep, nothing much was happening there. So I decided that uh, I had to change this computer to legacy. Is this one of those troublesome UFIs that just don't want to work? Either that or it's Linux Mint, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe maybe Linux Mint has an issue. I'm, I'm not sure about that. So, and that was Linux Mint 18.3, by the way. So I've booted myself into the BIOS and these few, first few pictures don't matter, but this is what we're interested in, is the security. And in the security part there, you need to set a supervisor password to be able to change from UEFI to legacy. So what I've done is when you enter here, you've got to put a new password and confirm the new password. So you go ahead and do that. Then you make your way over to the boot par, part of the BIOS and you change UEFI to legacy. Now, just ignore the secure boot there because it was disabled. Um, that's just a picture I took with the boot enabled while I was doing this. So I changed it to the legacy BIOS and there's a picture there, legacy BIOS uh, with, with no uh, secure boot. So you can, you can clearly see that. Now, once you do this, uh, you want to go back to the security part of the BIOS. And once again, reactivate this set user password. Enter the current password that you used. And once you do that, you enter twice and leave these two fields blank. So enter new password and confirm new password, leave them blank and just nothing in there. And then once you do that, it will clear it. Otherwise, if you leave the password there, you'll be prompted for a password when you boot your computer. So you don't really want to be doing that every time you boot. So once you do that, you clear it off. Then you exit saving changes and then you're in legacy mode. So that's what I had to do with that. I try to do everything under UEFI these days, but there are some computers that just don't want to take it for some reason, or it's probably a mix of the particular distro and and the computer as well. Could be both. So 
Um, just one of those anomalies that you come across when you're installing things. So anyway, um, I hope you found that uh, helpful or indeed interesting. And uh, thanks for joining me.